Hey, it's Jeremy from Jeremy.net. So this is another time lapse from my uh, Wonderland Nightmare series. This time the Mad Hatter, and I will include a link to the the finished print of this for um, for sale in my store, and that'll be in the description. So again, as I go back and I look at these, and I think about you know what I was thinking and feeling when I at the time I was making them. I still always, I, I almost am tempted to go back and try making alternate versions of each of these. Because when I look at the, uh, the way the line work is, when it's just all red and, and white and the line art, the black line art, that alone kind of makes me feel like that, that's a pretty simple, bold look for it. That very monochromatic feel to it. You know, and as I go in and I'm laying in just my basic flat colors, the thing I realize is that I, I have to remember to not get too wrapped up in rendering because rendering does add a lot of cool polish to it and detail and zing. But I feel like if you don't have it just in terms of the simple composition with flat colors, then maybe the color choices aren't right or maybe it's not there yet. Because to a certain degree, I feel like almost at this stage where it's just very simple, flat colors and hardly any rendering at all, this alone feels like a kind of a finished piece to me. It could be like this. So everything from here on out, although I do think that I add a lot to it with the coloring and the rendering that, that I add from here forward, that, you know, it could have been just a finished piece on its own just like that. For the most part, the, the additional rendering here is me really, again, still getting familiar with coloring in Procreate learning how to get the tool to do what I want, and also really expanding my, my color vocabulary in terms of using color temperature for rendering in lieu of value. And that's something that I had made a blog post on my, uh, my Patreon a few days ago about, about using color temperature in lieu of value shifts, you know, places where there's a transition, but it's not a transition of light to dark or defining different areas. And I think that for this piece, a lot of it, you know, the beginning after I finished the, the basic flat colors was a lot of me adding the rim lighting, adding that warm light that was coming from the sky and sort of surrounding the character in the background. But now as you can see, I'm laying in these cool blues and the blue shadows and me just experimenting with different lighting techniques. So in this case, I'm having the character lit from above with kind of a creepy cold blue light to contrast the, the overall red and warmth in the background. So for this, I'm really playing, you know, my lights and my darks are real simple. Like the background is just supposed to be like kind of weeds and, and brush and bramble, you know, and that's dark. And then the character's all in the foreground, but there's not really any huge value shifts in the, the foreground of the character, an area that's like going from light to dark. So instead, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm trying to use color temperature, mean, making the, the frontal lighting a warm lighting and then letting the cool light that's surrounding him feel like the dark lighting, the, the edge light and the lighting of the environment, that's all very warm. And as you'll see as I go through here, you know, even when I start rendering into the background, there's a point here where I start coloring the line art itself. And one of the things that I do, and you'll, you'll see with that, is when I go in and color in the, uh, the background, I push that to very warm, I mean, to cool blue at the bottom, but then as it creeps up towards the top, towards the sun, shifting it towards purple. And, you know, normally warm colors come forward and cool colors go back, but in this case, with the whole background being red, as I'm pushing it to the warm, as I push it towards purple at the top, what you'll see is it'll start feeling like it's starting to merge with the background. So it's kind of like, me seeing what I can do if I reverse what, the way we normally think of light. Right in here with the teacup, I actually went through and, and painted that in and out a couple of times because at a certain point when I come in here, I start adding shadows. At first I was gonna try and do concentric circles of, of uh, ripples in the teacup. I just realized that that, I wasn't sure if I could pull it off, one. But two, just the fact that it felt like it would be a little bit too distracting from, from what I was trying to do. I wanted to keep the, that color and that lighting simple, but then I realized 
you know, as I was having blue light creeping up of the up the boat, I realized that what I want to do is, as I'm having, you can see it flickering on and off as I'm looking at what looks like when I turn off either the warm layers or the cool layers, I'm trying to figure out what I want to do with the face and, you know, adding really kind of a, a third lighting or a third light source, which is I wanted to play with light reflecting down into the, uh, into the, the soup, into the cup, and then reflecting warm light into the underside of the Mad Hatter. And so now I'm doing it where I'm adding cool lights under his, you know, his chin, at the, the shirt where it's closest, and then having the inside of the cup being lit with red. And this is all, at a certain point, I wonder if it would have behooved me to, to sit down and actually make a maquette and light it with different colored lighting. Right there where you saw a little bit of a strobe and the artwork turning all black and then white, that was me pasting line art into a masked layer so that I can now paint on a layer mask. And this, I filled that whole layer mask with a, a bluish purple. And then I go in, I start muting it a little bit where I, I add, well, at the bottom it's a little bit more muted and cooler. And then at the top, you'll see it gets more purple, almost shifting towards a, well, it's just shifting away from blue and more towards a warmer and warmer purple at the top. And now you can see it's really starting to fit, fade into the background, but also, you know, the goal here is I was hoping I could get that sensation of the light, like there's a sun setting behind him and that's actually starting to, to shine through and light up the actual trees and, and bramble and brush behind him. So yeah, at this point, it's just going in and just refining a little bit of the line art and the, the shadows and trying to, to color the line art so that it carries along the, the overall color scheme that I've established throughout the piece. So for this, like making the back of his hands, you know, they're blue-ish, then adding a little bit of a red glow from the light, the, the coloring of the cuffs, and it's actually coloring his hand then letting the, the atmospheric blue lighting that's hitting the foreground, lighting up the, the shoulders, so that, you know, I'm still keeping it a fairly dark, muted color, but now, as opposed to it just being black line art, it's like a, a dark blue-gray. And then the last part that I realized I had forgotten at the end, is like, I look like, he looks like his suit was too neat, too crisp, too clean. So it's like, wait, I gotta go in on this whole piece and, and grimy it up. And to be honest, when I get to the end, I'm still not 100% sure whether I couldn't have, I didn't go far enough. It's possible I could have pushed this even further, but I just went through and kind of added some grime and grut, grit and soot to, to his clothing, to the hat, to the cup itself, even to the, the chair that he's sitting on. I wanted the whole thing to feel kind of gritty and grimy. So, and, and for a lot of these things, it's one of those cases of trying to figure out just how much is the right amount. Cause I didn't want to go overboard and go too much but you know even with this it's just trying to to mute it and, and find just the right balance but overall i'm pretty happy with how this one came out thanks for watching this video was brought to you by my subscribers on patreon.com if you'd like to join them go to patreon.com slash g-e-r-i-m-i for as little as two dollars a month you'll receive a bonus monthly video and a ton of behind the scenes artwork and blog posts. To read pages of my comics for free and keep up with what I'm creating, sign up for my monthly newsletter at newsletter.jeremy.net. And to buy physical copies of my comics or read digitally on Amazon Kindle, go to amazon.jeremy.net. That will forward you to my Amazon author page. That's it for now. Go be creative.